welcome to the Elida Fieldhouse Media Bank Court. It is regional semifinal basketball night on at WSN. Our opening game tonight, the Gibson Burke Golden Bears at 23 and 2. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs at 20 and 5. My name is Mark Schein. My pleasure to be play by play. Alongside Mr. Dave Bow and Dave, it is regional semifinal night. We've got 16 left in this division. We've got four of them here tonight. Obviously, good matchup. Outstanding matchups, Mark. Great to be your wingman this evening in this opening round match between, as you said, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the Gibsonburg Golden Bears. Columbus Grove comes in at 20 and 5. They were 7 and 1 in the PCL. Had another good run this year in the NWC. Your, your thoughts about them as we go into this game tonight? Just an outstanding team that centers around one Lauren Achmudi, the five foot seven junior. First team Northwest Conference player, PCL player of the year, 1,249 points, fourth in school history. She is the straw that stirs the drink, but she's got a great supporting cast as well. We're going to see it on display. Nicole Nesby in the post does an outstanding job for these Grove Bulldogs. Well, let's run through their starting lineup. Then you mentioned Lauren Achmudi. She wears number two. She's a 5'7 junior, averaging 20 points a game and seven rebounds. Number five will be Ruth Myers, 5'5 sophomore at 1.2 points per game. Number 21 is Kendall Palti, 5'9 sophomore, 3.4 points per game. 22 is Abby Steckschulte. She is a 5'7 senior at 1.6. And you mentioned Nicole Nesby. She is a six foot sophomore, averaging 7.2 points per game this evening. The Gibson Gold Golden Bears, Coach Bo Everett's, uh, they, they've come in here today at 25 and 2, 17 to 1 in their conference play, and they have an outstanding player as well. Your analysis for the Golden Bears this evening. Yeah, Ellie Everett's, the freshman, the 5 foot 8 freshman, averages 22 a game, district player of the year, Sandusky Bay player of the year. Coach Everts, her father, has just done a great job of rebuilding this Gibsonburg program. The stat that I found fascinating, the seniors on this team, as freshmen, they won two games. As sophomores, six games. Juniors, 17. And now the most wins in school history as seniors. They have worked hard to rebuild this program. They deserve to be here. They want to come out of what I affectionately referenced the Elida Fieldhouse as Little Mecca with a win tonight to come back Saturday at 1. Gibsonburg starters go this way. Number one is Leah Hall. She's a 5'8 sophomore averaging 7.7 .7 points per game and 6.6 .6 rebounds. Number 11 is Ansley Fleming, 5'4 junior at 4.2. Number 14, Sophia Paul, a 5'4 senior at 5.2 points per game. Dave mentioned Ellie Everts. She is uh, number, number 22, 5'8 freshman, 22 a game, six rebounds, almost four assists, and better than four steals per game for her. The final starter is number 33. That's Jasmine Morant, 5'9 senior. She averages 9.2 points per game and 7.2 rebounds. It is Gibsonburg, 23 and 2. It is Columbus Grove, 20 and 5. It's for the regional semifinal and the right to play either Tip and Calvert or Crestview. It's coming up next. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Union Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. It is Gibsonburg at 23 and 2. It's Columbus Grove at 20 and 5. Our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring, and you can visit jobs.criver.com and apply today. We have not mentioned our officials yet this evening for this very important game. That would be Jim Tarr, Mac Williams, and Ralph Green. We'll call the game tonight, and Dave, as I'm looking over, here comes Tiffin Calvert into the gym. Always great to come in and catch the atmosphere before your game, similar to like the JV game, but this is not a JV I mean, game. Is. But you get here, try and follow your same procedure when you're playing that second game as much as possible. Some numbers for you right now. Columbus Grove, they were 20 and 5. They scored at 50.5 points per game. They give up 34.9. The Gibson, Gibsonburg Golden Bears almost identical. They scored at 53.3, and they give up 34.1. Columbus Grove got here as the number two seed in their district. They have defeated Fort Jennings 47-18, Kaleida 45-38, and Miller City 48-35.
Gibsonburg Golden Bears. They get here as the number three seed in, in the Northwest Ohio District. Uh, in District number three, they were the number one seed. They defeated Holgate 56-25, Lakota 37-35, and Toledo Christian 49-41. Nicole Nesby will head to center circle. Well, she will jump center with Leah Hall, and Ralph Green will toss the ball, and we are ready for regional semifinal basketball. Ball goes through the backcourt and right to Lauren Ockmoody. Gibsonburg opens up in man-to-man -man defense. Here's a lob inside, and a catch, and a score, and a finish inside. Nicole Nesby has the first basket of the game. One of, if not the most improved player on this Grove squad from the beginning of the year until now. They go to her right away. Nesby finishes inside. Sophia Paul trying to work to get open. This is Everett. Ellie has baseline where she is doubled up and throws it out to midcourt where teammate Ansley Fleming has to run it down. This is Paul. Baseline jumper. It's blocked. But she stepped out of bounds. Did Ruth Myers. Good defense there by Grove. Paul looking to score. They'll maintain possessions, possession with the ball going out of bounds. Off a of screen comes Ansley Fleming. This is Sophia Paul and then Ella Everts. Grove in a 2-3 zone. Harassed right now by Ruth Meyer. Everts comes off a of screen baseline. And doubled up again. Morant heads baseline. Has to throw it out on top. But Grove is everywhere right now. They are really on the move defensively. They are. And Gibsonburg moving the ball from side to side. Get the ball down in the dead spot there. But you're right. The Grove defense. But there's Everts with the long shot. Kelly Everts has made 83 three-point field goals on the season in their 25 basketball games. That's not too shabby. Uh, that's all right, isn't yep. it? Yep, 42% clip from behind yep. the arc as well. Leads the team in that category. A diaper dandy she is, an outstanding freshman. Some minor comparisons to Caitlin Clark I've heard already. Uh, uh, just a different a level, loop. obviously. There's but a dive on the floor. Yep. Everett wrestles the ball away from Meyer. And triple teamed at midcourt, but able to get out of the trap is Fleming. Everett from inside, and she scores her first basket of the game. So not faced by the air ball at all. It's Everts comes right back like you would expect your leading scorer to do. It scores, gets Gibsonburg on the board. Cross-court pass against the 2-2-1. Ball goes on top to Palti. Here's a three-ball shot and missed. But Akmudi scrambles into the rebound. She takes a step-back jumper. Nesby battles inside. Akmudi again. Shorter jump shot this time. That rolls around. And who hit it out of bounds? It went off of Nesby and will go to the Golden Bears. Some good looks there for Columbus Grove. Hit the offensive glass really hard. Coach Schrader's got to be pleased with the offensive boards. Just needs to see a finish there. Sophia Paul gets the little trap press coming right at midcourt, and they back out of it. Paul goes baseline, kick out. In the lane goes Fleming, and this is Morant. She goes to the rim. Scoop shot. Missed it. Akmudi rebounds. Grove in a hurry the other way. Akmudi to the rims. And she will draw the first foul in the basketball game. And we will get Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. The first foul in the basketball game goes to Ansley Fleming. It was great the view we have down here at the baseline. Lauren Akmudi as she was bringing the basketball down the floor, surveying, and then made the decision to attack the rim. Draws the personal foul. Good on the first free throw. 67% free throw shooter on the season. And makes another one. 4-2 early on. Grove. Sophia Paul weaves through traffic. Everett, step through, off glass, no, but gets her own rebound. Kick out to Morant. Back to the rim, no, and Akmudi has another rebound and heads the other way again. Ball goes into the corner, Palti ball fakes. Pass to Nesby, and that's going to get an easy basket thanks to Kendall Palti's pass. Yeah, great assist there by Palti. Reads the defense, penetration. Good things happen when you attack the rim. Grove with another bucket. Nesby picks up her second. 
Paul Morant, the foul line area. Down in the corner goes to Leah Hall. Three ball, no. Ruth Myers rebounds. Grove trying to push the pace at every opportunity. Yeah, both teams, when they're off, it's been long, and that's the adrenaline uh, showing up here in the early going. Hawk Moody with the bigger Morant guarding her. Ruth Meyer comes off a screen. Palti in the corner. Strip taken away. Steal by Angeli Fleming. Fleming up in the grill, able to steal that away. Morant, ball fakes and goes to 12, and she scores her first basket. Morant, just a great leader for Gibsonburg this year. The five foot nine senior captain scores right there. First team Sandusky Bay player. Ball was blocked, and then a wild pass out of bounds. We're going to get substitution both ways. Number 25, Emily Hendrickson will enter for Gibsonburg for Columbus Grove. We have number 10, Jay Seifker. And who else checked in, Dave, that I missed? Ah, taking the basketball out of bounds. Is that Ava Schrader? No, it is 14. That's Allison Thompson. Four and a half into this. Both coaches go to the bench. Ruth Meyer to the rim. Tries to bounce pass it through traffic. It's knocked out of bounds. Yeah, fortunate enough that that went off a Gibsonburg player. Doing my research, Dave, Columbus Grove has never been to the state tournament. They have not, huh? Gibsonburg had never been to the regionals before this year. Akbudi lobs it out to Nesby. Akbudi doubled up. Yeah, Lawrence getting a lot of attention, and rightly so, from this Gibsonburg defense. They've gone big with her with a 5 9 Morant guarding Now they come out to trap. Nesby in the lane gets it tipped away by Leah Hall. She loses it. Scramble for the basketball. Picked up by Thompson and will go the other way to the rim. And drawing contact will be Ruth Myers. Ruth Myers gets that ball in the dribble. You can see at the top of the three-point line, she was going to go to the basket. Gets there, draws contact. She's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw line, where she is a 56% free throw shooter Just for these girls. Take only nine free throws all season. She makes that one. Thanks to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for sponsoring our free throws this evening. And that's a surprising stat with the way she just attacked the basket say, right there. the same thing. Ball's tipped around. Goes out into the hands of Jade Seifker. Extra possession grow. And that's the three-point field goal. Chuck it up for Ock Moody. Three-point field goal sponsored by Dale's Concrete tonight. And we get an immediate timeout from Gibsonburg. Grove up by six. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. We're back at Union Bank Court, the Elida Fieldhouse. Our three-point field goal is now brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential and the concrete needs. That three-point field goal by Ock Moody put her team up by six, hence the timeout from Coach Bo Everts. Yeah, Coach took that timeout. He said, we cannot allow uncontested looks. And right there, Lauren Ock Moody had it, and she made him pay. Conversely, Ruth Myers... Hand in the face of Everts, the player, unable to come up with that shot for Gibsonburg. Hawk Moody, deep three. Bounces around, rebound, Everts. The freshman heads the other way. She lost it momentarily. Here's Morant. And we're going to get contact. That will be a blocking foul. That will go against Lauren Hawk Moody. Looking at my stat page, we mentioned that uh, Ellie Everts has 83 three-point field goals in the season. That three-point field goal a moment ago by Lauren Ockmoody, her 87th of the year. Yeah, they're playing cards, and both of them are holding really good hands when they're shooting from behind the arc. Outstanding effort out there and great percentages as Ockmoody leads her team at 39% in that Paul category as well. Paul trying to get into the lane, runs into traffic. Morant gets a little jumper thanks to the good pass. Paul battles for the rebound. It's tipped out front. It's Everett's. And she lost it, and the ball went off the sideline. This will allow Abby Steckschulte to re-enter. 
And also into the game for the first time will be Elise Fortman. She wears number four for Brian Schrader's team. Coach Schrader's got to eight in the game already. Also into the game will be number four, Elena Moulter. She will be the seventh player to enter the basketball game this evening. Eight in the game for Coach Schrader, and they all know where number 22 is for Gibsonburg <laughs> at all times. Hawk Moody backs up under pressure from Henderson. Right off the bench, three ball, bounces away, and you scramble for the rebound. It went off of Abby Steckschulte. So we stay at 10-4 the way it was a minute ago at the quarter break, or at the timeout break. Pass to the middle of the floor, goes to Moulter. Everett's ball fakes, goes to the rim. That one bounced out on her. Rebound, Hall, that bounced out. Battle for the rebound, Hall gets it again. Great effort on the offensive glass right there by one. Uh, Miss Hall for Leah Gibson. Hall, yeah. yeah, Leah, thank you. Yeah, number one, yep. Ellie Everett comes off the screen and immediately gets picked up by a second Grove player. Morant comes off the screen. Got away from him that time, did Everett, but she couldn't score, and Nesby rebounds the backside. We're under 40 seconds to go. Akbu to the rim, Eurostep, spins it in, is going to get an and one opportunity. Lauren Akmudi with the pressure, the attack to the rack, the Euro move, the Euro step, she scores it. Going to the free throw line, the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line for the three point play, the old fashioned way, Mark. That is the first foul on Jasmine Morant, her team's third of the quarter and the 67% shooting free throw. Lauren Ockmoody has a chance to score point eight and does so. Her team is up nine here. Solid defensive quarter for Columbus Grove. Yeah, they have been aware of where Ellie Everts is all the time. Skip pass, Paul. Steal, Ockmoody got a chance to score again before the quarter break. Pull up jumper from the foul line, banks it in. What a great decision to use yes. the backboard. She was moving forward, gets it off and scores it. Morant trying to get a shot before the buzzer. Everett way out past the volleyball line. Here comes a screen for her. That's going to be an illegal screen that will go against Leah Hall. And that will be Aaliyah's second foul here in the opening quarter with .9 to go. Talking to Coach Schrader before the game started, he said a good start would be very beneficial for us. You couldn't write a better script than this, Mark. Ock Moody for three-quarter court. Really good opening quarter for the Columbus Grove. Lady Bulldogs up taking an 11-point lead to the break. We're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back to the United Field House. Our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. You can visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. That scoreboard, Dave, says 15 to 4. Columbus Grove, really good quarter for them. Great quarter for Coach Schrader's club. He wanted to force contested perimeter shots. He, he did that in the first quarter. Gibsonburg uh, really had to work hard to get clean looks. Um, and he wanted to rebound at both ends, and with the exception of Leah Hall getting back-to-back -back offensive boards, Grove has executed on the glass as well. Lauren Ockmoody had 10 in the opening quarter, four for Nicole Nesby. The two baskets for Gibsonburg will by Everett's and Morant. Ellie Everett's. Pass on top, Hall, Morant on the wing. She goes to the rim and lost it, and it was hit out of bounds by Grove Bulldog. Turnovers in that first quarter. Grove had four. Gibsonburg six, and Grove made money off of those turnovers in that first quarter as well. There's a lob pass out on top. Goes to Henderson back in the corner to Everett. Step back three. Missed it, but she got fouled. Looks like a three-point opportunity. Nope. Or is it? I think the foul was afterwards on the floor. Yep, I believe Mr. Green is saying it is on the floor. See that Columbus Grove foul on is on. 
Abby Stecksholdy will get her first. And it was well after the shot, so it'll be a sideline out of bounds for the Golden Bears. Everett will be the inbounder. Gibsonburg struggled from, from the floor in that first quarter. Two for 13 for 15 percent. Grove, five for 11, 45 percent. Everett's step back 12 footer. That one rolls around and comes out. The rebound came down on the backside to Steck Schulte. Here's Ock Moody. Nesby tried to post up inside, couldn't get it down to her. Palti goes to the rim. She does get it to Nesby. And that's two passes she's laid off to her for baskets. Yeah, and another great move. Nesby used her left hand right there on the left side of the basket, put her body between the defender and the ball. Meyer tips it away to Palti. Palti heads to the rim. She goes up with her left hand to miss. Everest will go the other way with it. And her shot goes wild, but she is fouled on the way to the rim. I like the determination, the tenacity right there of Ellie Everts to attack the rack. She wasn't going to give that up to anybody. She knew it was either going to be a bucket and a foul, or worst case scenario, going to the free throw line for two, and that's where she's at. Free throw sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi Center, St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Everett's a 77% free throw shooter, makes the first. And also the second, she has four of the six points that Gibsburg has on the board. Long pass ahead, Steck Schulte. Hot Moody gets another three look. That's back in the rim, Palti with the rebound. Steck Schulte tried to get to the rim and could not. Meyer in the corner. Myers looks. Nesby is swinging around to Palti. Hockmoody gets a three. She got another one. A Dale's concrete three-point field goal, her second tonight. She's got 13. It's a timeout, Gibsonburg. You're watching High School Turn of Basketball, WOSN. Uh, the Union Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Lauren Ockley just made her second three-point field goal this evening. A three-point field goal, so that is sponsored by Dale's Concrete. Called Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping. And Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dave, they've tried to play size on her by putting the 5'9 Jasmine Morant, but she gets away from him, and then she's quick enough to get the shot off before Morant can react. Yeah, Coach Bo Everts, he's got to make some decisions here. He likes Jasmine Morant on the other team's best player, says that Jasmine is our best defensive player, but right now, Lauren Ockmitty has made two threes, and after each three, Coach Everts has called timeout, allowing us to get our three-point sponsor in there very easily. Yeah. <laughs> Against the 2-2-1 press, here's Everts. She skates down the lane, makes a good pass. That shot was blocked by Emily Henderson, but Henderson, Henderson will get to go to the free throw line. That might be a situation to be concerned with because Lauren Ockmoody now has two fouls. We have six minutes to go in quarter two, and Henderson goes to the free throw line. You're right, Mark. Obviously, Lauren Ockmoody, a very smart basketball player, very cerebral. And she'll work hard not to pick up that third foul, but sometimes you just get put uh, in a position where it happens. So she's going to have to be careful out here with 6.06 to go in the second quarter. Everything's been going Grove's way. Right now, though, that second foul and those two made free throws might get momentum changing a little bit here. Let's see what Gibson Burke can do. There's a steal. There's a steal, yep. Everett's with a steal. Pull up three from deep. Bounces off the rim. Nesby fights for the rebound, and it goes out of bounds to Columbus Grove. This Emily Henderson leads famous recipe chicken free throws. Give her, gave her two points for the game. If anything, it might take Akmudi's drive to the goal away from her. You don't want a charging foul type situation. Outstanding point. Can't put her in a position where she's vulnerable for that third foul, especially when she has the basketball. Got to make great decisions. Skip pass. Steck shoulder. She ball fakes. And here's knocked out of bounds by Morant. And no defensive change. Morant's going to stay right on Oct Moody. Sideline out of bounds. Kendall Palti. To Steck Schulte. Defense, 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 defense. 
to the corner. Palti, she gets to go to the rim. Pass out front, deck shoulder. Tipped away by Everett's, but out of bounds. Ellie Everett's does not play like a freshman. Oh, my goodness. Gibson Bird fans are going to have a lot of fun watching her. They have this year, and they've got her for three more. Nesby up high to Steck Schulte. And Ruth Myers. The Gibsonburg defense a little more intense, pushing the ball out away from the basket. Steck Schulte, or excuse me, Meyer goes to the rim with the left hand no, and Nesby could not secure the rebound. It will go to Gibsonburg. Good hustle play by Nicole Nesby. Upset with herself a little bit for not pulling down that rebound, but it wasn't due to a lack of effort. This dead ball will allow Allison Thompson to enter, and she will take Ruth Meyer's place. Coach Schrader going to stay with the full court defense. Angelie Fleming. And she finds Sophia Paul. Sophia gets into the lane, and Morant. Grove has been in this very active 2-3 zone the entire game. It has Morant. a lot of man-to-man -man principles it to does, this zone yeah. defense. They are really guarding the basketball with intensity. Short corner, Morant. And Sophia Paul gets a jumper out of the corner, and Paulsley, Palti gets another rebound. Palti into the lane, steps through, and her shot's a little hard. The rebound comes out to Morant. Couple possessions, one and done for Grove. Good defensive rebound by Gibsonburg. See if they can cut into this 12-point lead halfway through the second quarter. Everett's into the lane. Her pass goes to Paul in the corner. That one misses. Rebound Henderson. She and Nesby tie it up, and it will be Columbus Grove basketball. The winner will be back here Saturday afternoon, correct? Mr. Saturday Bowen? afternoon at 1 p.m., regional championship. All the marbles on the table to go to date. To play the winner of our next game this evening, that would be Tiffin Calvert and Crestview. Hawk Moody comes off a screen, tries to turn the corner, pull a jumper over Henderson. Nesby yep. pushed her way to the rebound. Yep. And got caught. Yep, she got caught. Again, you like the hustle down there, but yes, yeah, she pushed and, and that's, her, that's her first foul. We yep. got 339 to go in the second. Go for a rebound if that happens. That's okay. You'll take that any day of the week, that kind of effort. It's a hustle foul. As you said, just Nicole's first of the game. Shade Siefker and Leah Hall both enter for their respective teams. Coach Schrader asking his team to peel back a little bit, and they do so. Everett's way out on top. They switch with Paul T. guarding her. Sophia Paul tries to get to the rim. The baseline was covered up. There's Morant in the corner. This will be a three out of the corner. That will go long. And Morant gets the rebound. Morant and Nesby get, getting after it on the glass right there. Morant wins that battle, both leading rebounders for the respective clubs. Here's Morant in the lane, and she scores. She had a basket in the opening quarter, and now one in this quarter for her four points, and it's back to a 10-point game. Yeah, I like how she penetrated to the middle of the paint, stopped and popped, nothing but cord. Steck Shorty's little runner in the lane goes. Not Steck Shorty, Hawk Moody for 15 points now in the game. Yeah, nice patience there. Again, didn't attack the defense with the two fouls, pulled up the teardrop from 12. That broke a nearly three-minute scoring drought for Columbus Grove. Everett's backs up under pressure. Everett's doubled up as she tried to get in the lane, and the ball was tipped out of bounds then by Ockmoody. Here comes Ruth Myers back in the game yeah. for Kendall Palti. Yeah, nice defense by Palti, and then Ruth Myers, she does a great job. She's nasty at the top of this 2-3, and you notice Ruth Myers and Palti, they're always on the left side of that 2-3 where Everts seems to be most of the time. And headed to the rim that time was Sophia Paul, and she gets knocked down. 
This will be a free throw opportunity, I believe. Allison Thompson will get her first foul, but that is the fifth of the quarter, so with 2.14 to go. So Peel Paul will go to the free throw line for the double bonus situation. Yeah, Paul is a Sandusky Bay Conference River Division honorable mention player. She's had a lot of shots here in the first half. Hasn't been able to score until right there. Seeing that ball go through the net right now may be beneficial for her as this game continues on and picks up her first and second mm -hmm. point of the game. A pair of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws bounce in for her first two points of the game, and it's back to a 10-point lead again. Gibsonburg's been in this man-to-man -man the whole game. Ockwood, tries to weave through traffic and loses the basketball. Nice steal by the Golden Bears. Everts with the basketball. Averages 22, wears 22. Morant missed. Rebound. Thompson to Ockwood. Spin move. This is going to be a jump around the corner. A three-point field goal bounced off the rim for Jade Seifker. Good look for Seifker, good reversal. Again, Ruth Myers, 2-3 zone, <laughs> but she is all over. <laughs> that she is. Ellie Everts. Squaring up for a three. That will bounce out. That's a tough break that time for Emma Giver Giverden. Yeah, tough break. A collective groan from the Gibsonburg <laughs> side of the field house. They thought that one was going down. Well, they would love to be under double figures Correct. by the, the yes. halftime break. That was a key miss. Here's a three on the other side. That one bounces long, and Paul rebounds in the corner. Gibsonburg does not have a foul here in quarter number two. Morant works, throws it inside. Hall missed a shot. And in a battle for the rebound, they got their first foul. Leah Hall, though, will pick up foul number three with 53.7 to go. Yeah, if you're Gibsonburg, you feel decent about the second quarter. You have neutralized the momentum that Grove had in the first quarter. You just haven't been able to make strides other than neutralizing the momentum. <laughs> well, so far, it's been an 8-7 yeah. quarter yeah. in favor of Gibsonburg. As both teams' defenses have been pretty sticky, and when you've got an open shot, you miss. Steck back three, Akmudi bounces right at the guide wire up hot. That is her patented move right there. Just a little bit of a line drive. Needs to get a little more arch on it. The line drive goes off the iron up into the safety belt. For that's the turnover. Let's see how quickly Everett chooses to play. Are they going to try to get a shot or just hold for the last one? Everett comes off a pair of screens and immediately finds two red jerseys chasing her around. That ball stolen by Akmudi. Heads to the rim. Spin shot, good. 17 for her in the opening half. Great attack to the rim. Even though she has the two fouls, she knew she had the defense at a disadvantage. Did not give Gibsonburg a break. Gets the field goal. Everett looking for somewhere to go against Ruth Meyer. Akmudi, boy, that was close to a foul right there. Instead, Everett's lost it out of bounds. She went baseline. That was close, Dave. It was, and that would have changed the complexion of this game going into the half. Here's, Here's a steal. steal. Everest for three at the buzzer, and it bounced out on her. Almost a chance to cut it to that single-figure lead, but instead, Columbus Grove has Gibsonburg doubled up with half. 24-12, second half coming up after this. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Almost completed here at the Union Bank Court at the United Fieldhouse. It's Columbus Grove 24, it's Gibsonburg 12. Dave Bowen, your thoughts on the first half? Well, if you look at Gibsonburg, Coach Everts has got to talk to his team about more ball movement in the half court as far as looking to get Ellie Everts some shots, but not right away. The initial defense by Columbus Grove is just too strong. They need to reverse the ball and find her for open looks. Uh, Gibsonburg, they need to do that with everybody because they're shooting. It's just really, really challenging for them right now. They are 3 for 23 from the floor for 13%. 0 for 11 behind the arc. From the free throw line, they're perfect, 6 for 6. So they need to continue to look for ways to draw fouls and get to the free throw line. I, I thought if there was a really telling statistic in that entire thing, 
Gibsonburg, although with just 12 points, did not have an assist in the first half. Correct. And they had some opportunities where they made some good passes and didn't connect. But Correct. other times, it's been the Grove defense has forced them into tough looks. And for Coach Schrader, he's got to be real pleased with the defensive intensity that they have brought to the field house this evening. They know where number 22, Ellie Everts, is at at all times. It is a collective whole. There's been some great teaching here uh, in preparation for this game, and they are all on the same page defensively. Offensively, they've shown some great patience. You know, they came out right away in the first quarter. They smacked Gibsonburg in the mouth. Lord Ockmoody picks up two fouls. Their offense changed a little bit. They were more patient but more of a dissecting kind of uh, offense, and they did a nice job. I think he's going to encourage his team to continue to be patient and pass up good shots for great shots and continue uh, this momentum into the second half. Charles Rivers, our scoreboard sponsor tonight. They're the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, and they are hiring at jobs.criver.com, and you can apply there today. It is Columbus Grove on defense to start half number two. Let's see if Coach Everts came up with something new at halftime. Lauren Ockmoody has 17, four for Sophia Paul, four for, four for Jasmine Morant to lead. Here's Paul out of the corner for three, and that one goes. That's their first Dales concrete three-point field goal, and that came off an assist. It did, and Leah Hall shot that basketball, or excuse me, Ainsley, or Sophia Paul shot that right. with confidence. Right inside, they go to Nesby, and she will be fouled. That goes to Jasmine Rant, Jasmine's second. That will mean Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. They can be found in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken, where home style happens here. Nicole Nesby will make her first free throw. And she's second on the team in that category, right at 59%. That one hit nothing but the bottom of the net. Six-foot sophomore does that with both of them. She now has eight points in the game, and it goes back to an 11-point lead. A little punch, counter punch here to begin the third quarter. That ball's tipped out of bounds on the sidelines. As coaches, we always talk about how important the first four minutes of the third quarter are Obviously, in this situation, one team wants to grab momentum. The other one wants to continue to maintain and sustain it. Right now, both of them with points in their first possession. Here's Paul again. That three-pointer bounced away and ends up in the hands of Abby Steckschulte. Ockmoody throws it ahead to Ruth Meyer. And back to Ockmoody it goes. She got out of the half with just two fouls. Leah Hall ended up the first half with three for Gibsonburg. Steck shoulder. Kick back to Palti. Palti to the rim. Ooh, just a bit hard for her. Everett throws it ahead. Her teammates not prepared for it. It went over the head of Ansley Fleming. And I think that might have been a point of discussion for Gibsonburg. When we get the rebound, let's get it out and go. Let's get the ball down the floor before Grove sets their defense. Yeah, they've had trouble attacking in half court. Let's see if we can get some stuff in transition. Good point, Dave. Akmudi to Palti and Abby Steckschulte. Nesby way up high, post player. Akmudi comes off a screen and steps into traffic. That was spun off the rim. Hall and Nesby battle for it, and who hit it? I believe it went off of Nesby. Yes. Great yep. team defense there by Gibsonburg. Attention to Akmudi, had to split the double team on the penetration, unable to come up with the bucket. Here comes Gibsonburg. Morant. Paul made a three from right there to begin the half. Paul goes baseline, pass in the lane. Hall gets a short jumper. I think she was surprised she was that wide yeah. open. There haven't been any open looks in this game, and I think she just caught a little bit of surprise. Yeah, she was open in the middle because Grove was still shading where Ellie Everts was at. She was opposite, so the middle of the floor was wide open. Sometimes those are the toughest shots in the world to make. Yeah, that's correct. Morant knocked it out of bounds. This will allow Emily Henderson to re-enter the game. 
This is just a little fundamental piece, but what I'm very impressed, Mark, with both teams, when they catch the ball, they put it in low ball position, they square up, they analyze, and then they continue with their offensive possession. It's a little thing, but when you see teams at this level, it is a fundamental that is very consistent and common. Sexually cannot get away from Everett's. Now she gets to the rim, scoop shot. Banged around, Stecksholder got the rebound thanks to Nesby. And Akmudi says, let's reset it. And so does her coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Right in her ear. Akmudi to the rim, left-handed shot. Offensive foul. Lauren Akmudi will pick up her third foul. That's a storyline in this game. Third foul with 5.16 to go in quarter number three. Lauren Akmudi again will see. Grove was trying to be aggressive with their offense, see if they have to take a little bit of a steam or momentum off of that offense because Akmudi now has three fouls, can't pick up her fourth. Henderson, top it goes to Morant. She goes inside, little jump hook, that goes. Jasmine Morant has a basket in each quarter now for six. Calm, cool, collected, and steely with that shot. 5'9", senior. Here's Nesby inside. And she skips it out. Stecksholdy gets a three look. Abby Stecksholdy. She's got 22 of those now on the season. That's her first Dale's three point field, concrete three point field goal of the game. Inside out action. Whenever you're a shooter and you catch it stepping to the basket like that, makes you that much more effective. Stecksholdy with really good rebounding position. Ball got tipped to her teammate, Palti, who heads down the floor. Skip pass. Stecksholdy gets another three look. Paulie was battling for the rebound. Ruth Paul, or, uh, Sophia Paul had her checked out. Yeah, great check out by Paul. Now she goes to baseline, does Sophia Paul. To Jasmine Morant. But Akmudi gets a steal and heads rimward. And overshot it, looking at the defender chasing her. Everett, she's going to get a three look out of the corner. There she goes. Great look from the wing when Grove could not recover on her. She was like, hey, if you're not going to guard me, I'm definitely putting this one up. Nothing but cotton, and that cuts the lead to nine. 83 on the season. Now 84, eight point, three-point field goals, her first of this game. Ruth Meyer shot bounces off the rim. Paul with the rebound, and... I think it's going to be knocked out by the Nesby. It is? I couldn't yep. tell it was a foul or whether it was because it's on the far end of the floor from us. I guess you're right. 325 to go in the third. Pass ahead to Morant. Big possession for Gibsonburg. Here's a three out of the corner on this side. That bounces away on the attempt by uh, Jiverett. One and done for Gibsonburg on that possession. They needed a bucket there. Cut into this nine-point deficit, trying to swing momentum their way. Lauren Ocknudy with the basketball. Nesby's open inside. The sophomore gets doubled up and kicks it back out. And Ocknudy ends up with it on the wing. Spin move. This will be a jumper out of the corner. That will be a three-point field goal for Allison Thompson. A Dale's concrete three-point field goal shoves it back to 12. Picks up her eighth three-pointer on the season. None more important than oh that one my. right there. And as we have seen multiple times, Columbus Grove makes a three, and Coach Evers calls timeout. 2.31 to go in the third. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Field goal sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete. You can call Dale's Concrete at Decorative stamp, Stamping in Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. It just seems to be 9 and 12, Dave. 9 and 12. That's where we're at right now. Exactly. In this quarter. Gibsonburg has a chance to cut the lead down from 9, and what happens? They come up empty and then Grove. They hit the three. Gibsonburg, as you said, calls the timeout. They've had three threes in this game, and there's been a timeout after each and every one of them by Coach Everts. And each team has scored eight points here in the third quarter. Morant will be the inbounder. 
Maybe if your coach Schrader said, hey, let's make two more threes so they'll be out of three. There's a three out of that corner. <laughs> yeah. That one is short. And the rebound to Allison Thompson. And she traveled trying to get the ball to Ahmoudi. Morant's pressure got involved. Who comes uh, Elena Moulter into the game. She wears number four for Gibsonburg. And she will replace Jividen. With Everts taking the ball out, look for her to come off the screen. Grove able to set the D. Skip pass. Paul quickly covered up by Jade Seifker. Dave, there are passive zones, and then there's this zone. Everett gets a three look. Ockmoody rebounds. Yeah, she had a good look right there. One of the few in the half court set that she's had because, as you said, this 2-3 zone by Columbus Grove, very, very aggressive. Ock Moody hands off. Thompson comes off a screen. They weave it out front to Myers. Sometimes the key when you go against an aggressive zone like that is just run your man stuff. Don't yeah. try and run a zone set against it. Here's another three that's going to go up. Nesby battles a couple of Bulldogs or go. And Ahmoudi, what's this call? What's it going to be? She went to the rim. Is it, a, it is a good basket. That would have been yes. huge if they would have gone the other way with it. But Ahmoudi had a step on the defender. She attacks the backboard, scores it. And she's at the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line for a chance again for a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Emily Henderson is the person committed to foul. Just her first second of the quarter for her team. And making a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw for point 20. And pushing the lead to 15 is Lauren Ockmoody. Yeah, golden. the Golden Bears are definitely in a little bit of the Kenny Loggins danger zone now. They need to string together some quality possessions. And that's going to be the fourth foul on Leah Hall if she sets an illegal screen. 5'8", Sophomore, who has not scored in this basketball game, averages almost eight a game and six and a half rebounds. And yeah. she's going to pick up foul four and head to the bench. Yeah, top break for the Golden mm. Bears. Leah Hall, the most improved player on this squad. Second team, Sandusky Bay Conference, River Division selection. She's going to have to sit. Hawk Moody cross dribbles out front, approaching 60 seconds to go in the third quarter. Nesby gives it up. Oh, might have got away Here's with another one. three. That one missed everything. And the rebound went to Ansley Fleming. Here comes Everett's pull-up jumper for her. Wisely done instead of taking the charge. Yeah, outstanding stop and pop for Ellie Everett. She now has nine points on the game. Morant trying to harass Ockmoody out front. Ockmoody goes around her, pull-up jumper. Woo! 22 in the game for Lauren. She averages 20 a game. We just saw back-to-back -back short jumpers. Who said that was an endangered species? Those were both outstanding shots. Very pretty. Fleming out of the corner for three. <laughs> Ansley Fleming's first basket of the game is her 20th made three-point field goal of the season, sponsored by Dale's Concrete and Stamping. Penetrating kick, three ball, corner pocket. Again at this end, that oh. one bounced out, and that bounced out at the buzzer. It was 12 at halftime, a very active third quarter. It's still 12. We'll go to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Board sponsor tonight is Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring, and you can visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. And on that scoreboard date, each team put 13 on the board in quarter three. Yeah, and the leading scores, Ock Moody and Everts for their teams, both had five, so the other players stepped up for both squads with eight markers in that quarter, and that's what's got to happen here for either team. It's not just going to be Lauren Ockmoody. It's not just going to be Ellie Everts. Ockmoody now has 22 in the game. Ellie Everts has nine to lead her team. Ockmoody, a little runner in the lane. She now has 24 <laughs> in the game. Oh, move over, Mr. Shakespeare. That's poetry in motion right there. Just so pretty. The lead goes to 14. 
And down here on the baseline, have they switched to – they're still in their 2-3. No. Are, are they in a box? I think they're – well, Palti walked away from yeah. Everett. I thought it was a box as well. Here's a shot in the lane. Akbudi gets a rebound. It's immediately pressured. She finds Kendall Palti. Kendall looking for tra in traffic. Doubled up. Steck shoulder. Nesby inside, and she will be fouled. That foul will be assessed to Ansley Fleming. Her first and 47 seconds into quarter four. First team foul on Gibsonburg. <laughs> Elena Moulter in it again. That will give a break to Jasmine Morant. I'll bet she's not down long. No. Too important as a senior to this team. Lob pass, Nesby pushes her way inside. Akmudi scrambles to the rebound. It's a held ball that will favor Gibsonburg. Stay tuned when this one comes to an end. Dave and I will give our Stolly Hustle Award winner and wrap this one up before we head into Crestview and Tiffin Calvert. Everett's. Step back shot. Just a bit short. Palti gets a rebound. Kendall Palti rallies to the ball very well. Yeah, just one of those maximum role players. Just does a lot of those little things for her club that puts him in a position Ock to be Moody, successful. Moody, step back three, is short. Here comes Everett's in a hurry. She goes right to the rim. She runs into Nesby, and it will be a shooting foul as Nesby pits up her second foul. And the free throw line will go Ellie Everett's. Free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Well, this is where you want to be if you're the Golden Bears. you got to get on the free throw line. you got to score points with the clock stopped. Here comes Morantz. She was down about 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. And you got to get hot from the floor a little bit. Gibsonburg was 4 for 13 or 5 for 11 in the third quarter for 45%. Grove, 4 for 13, 31%. But Grove had three free throws in that third quarter to Gibsonburg not getting to the line. Everett's free throw, the second of the two, gives her double figures in the game as she now has 10, and it will be time for Coach Brian Schrader to take a timeout. Timeout for WSN as well. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. Point sponsor tonight has been Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dave, I'm looking at the scoreboard here. It's a 13 point game. There's six and a half to go. Coach Schrader's in that odd zone. Do we, do we shut it down and, and play slower or do we keep the foot on the gas pedal? And it's really one of those, you know, what do we do right now situations? I'm going to use the word selective. We got to be selective with our um, shot selection. No, we don't want to put nope. anything in the deep freeze. And he is going to call a timeout right there as his guard was trapped on the sideline. So three seconds later, he will call just his second timeout. But you, you are correct, Dave, absolutely. You know, it's, it's way too early to shut this thing down. But at the same time, we need to be wise about when we step on the gas, when we back it off and work, work for a good shot. Yeah, Gibsonburg's played man-to-man -man the whole game. So this is a situation where you're probably going to have to attack because they're looking to double. We had the timeout occur right there. But if you do get in the half-court set, this is where you want to run your pet play. Uh, you know what you have scored successfully on all year long. If you get in a situation where you call the set, Run it. If not, look to attack, get to the basket, shoot the 90% shot. Palti looking for somebody to throw it to, and finally finds Nesby. And what? Accidental horn? Accidental horn. Yeah. That's tough because they finally got it in bounds. They struggle with yeah. it here. Yeah, and as a former official, you, you're like, you wait. If yeah. the players don't acknowledge the horn, you play on. If they do, you got to reset. Lob inside, Nesby, and she scores on an assist from Ock Moody. She's got double figures now with 10. Anytime you can isolate down on the post from a corner pass on the end, under out of bounds, Coach Dick Quarter cracks and the Kaleida Wildcats made a lot of money off of that kind of set right there. And that pushes it to 15. Here's a long three that bounces off the rim. Nesby fights for the rebound with Morant. And Jasmine Morant will be 
pick up her third foul. And is that the third of the quarter or second? I guess it's second. Again, Nicole Nesby, just steady Eddie and always around the basketball in, in the rebounding situation. Uh, Moody tried to get up the sidelines and instead bounces it off of Hall's leg. About 12 rows up into the crowd. Palti looks and finds Ock Moody. Morant continuing to play sticky defense on Ock Moody. But she gets by her. And she gets doubled up. To the corner it goes, stick shoulder, and now Palti. Palti goes to the rim, steps into traffic, and rebound comes into the hands of Leah Hall. Everett's in hurry the other way. Meyer almost got a hand on it. Yeah, two red shirts on her right away. Stecksholdy battling with Hall, and we're going to get a held ball, and it will favor Columbus Grove with 5.33 to go. Into the basketball games comes Elena Moulter. Palti and Nesby. Back to Palti. Ruth Myers. Situation where Achmedi's down at the other end a little bit, but now she's going to get back into play and get the ball here. Palti in the corner. She takes a three. How about that? Kendall Palti's first basket of the game. Her eighth made three a field goal of the season. In your What eye. a time to make a Dales concrete three-point field goal. Ball's loose. Ruth Meyer tracks it down, but not before she got to the sideline. Yeah, big three-pointer, uncontested. You're, that's one of those maybe as Coach Schrader, you're saying, no, 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 yes. Nice shot. We're up 18. Let's roll, ladies. <laughs> Five minutes to go. Everett's off a screen. Sophia Paul's three goes to Ahmad Moody. And Grove in control to Abby Stecksholdy. Ahmad Moody ball fakes and then wisely pulls it back out to run some clock. Palti gets another look. That one's long. Rebound comes to Leah Hall. Here comes Everett's the other way. Team needing points in a hurry. Yeah, this is where it's tough to find an open look for Everett. Whoa! Deep three-point field goal gives her 13 points on the game. Cuts the lead to 15. Here's the press. And we're going to get a held ball. This one will go to Gibsonburg. Great shot by Ellie Everts. Contested. She makes it and then give the hustle play to Jasmine Moran again right there. Held ball turns it over to the Golden Bears. And Majividen will enter the basketball game for Gibsonburg. And Sophia Paul with the basketball now and inside to Morant. Everett gets another three. Look out, Dave. Here she comes. 16 in the game for her. It's down to 12 with exactly four minutes to go. And doing my research, you know, Ellie Everts, a, a freshman, uh, she shared in the paper, and, and this is not said in an egotistical way or anything, but her dad obviously is the head coach. She said, my goal is to make sure my dad doesn't have to buy tickets at state tournament <laughs> for the next four years. Well, she's trying to do what she can right now to There's get pressure. back in the Steel, game. Steal, Morant to the rim, overshot it. Palti with the rebound. Palti looks, looks, and her coach takes a timeout. 3.47 to go in the basketball game. Columbus Grove by 12. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Union Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere. For only $8 per month, you can download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. Each team has called three timeouts, and Dave, Coach Schrader's called three timeouts in this quarter. Yeah, he's used them and at the right time. That was a great time by Coach Schrader. Uh, two threes, back-to-back -back threes for Gibsonburg. He needs to make sure that his squad knows we're ahead by 12 now. Let's take care of the basketball. Look for that 90% per shot. 
be ready for the double, and Akmudi's got to make herself available. Abby Stecksholde under pressure gets it to Kendall Palti and then to Lauren Akmudi, and it's thrown away. Here comes Everett's the other way. Everett's, and we're going to get a foul that will go against Lauren Akmudi. That will be her fourth. Is it a shooting foul? Yeah, I appreciate her effort, her intensity, but Lauren Achmudi right there. That might have been one where you just have the blow by, see if the, just your action of not reaching, but she commits the foul, and that's her fourth foul. Pair of free throw opportunities for Ellie Everett. She makes the first and the least famous recipe chicken free throws. This could make it a 10-point game, and she does. Momentum definitely on the side of the Golden Bears right now. Grove has got to be strong with the basketball. Nine in the quarter for Ellie Everett. Nesby. Stecksholde. Pass ahead. Akmudi inside. Goes up in traffic and she will draw a foul. Akmudi with the mental mindset to attack the basket again. I wouldn't have been upset if she could pull that out, but she draws the contact. She's going to go to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Ellie Everett picks up her first foul, the team's third. Akmudi makes that one. That is point twenty-five for her. Makes an eleven-point lead. If she makes this, we will play the entire second half dead even. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back to that 12-point yep. differential. Which she does. In fact, Dave, since the end of the first quarter, Columbus Grove's actually got a one-point lead. They've had a big lead at the end of the opening quarter. They're up one since then. Pass out. Jumper. That one will go. A splashed in by Jasmine Morant. She's got eight in the game now. She's got a basket in every quarter. Abby Steck shorty with three minutes to go. Nesby inside on a assist pass. Nesby's got 12. Good pass. You can see it in the eyes of the girls on both squads. Neither team wants their season to end. Battling hard down the stretch. Morant, pull up jumper. Battle for it. Scramble on the floor. Ruth Meyer went for it, and I think we're going to get a foul. That will go against Ellie Everett's. And I think very good patience by Mr. Official because she was upset with herself, slammed the ball on the floor, and he walked away rather than tee her up. I think that's a really good officiating move. Yeah, great piece of officiating right there. And I think also maybe a teammate got that ball coming up off yeah. the floor too to help uh, Ellie not get that technical foul. That is her second. It is also the fourth foul of the quarter for Gibsonburg. So. Columbus Grove will be shooting free throws the rest of the basketball game. Here's Akmudi. And she goes down. Scramble for the ball. Everett's in the corner, immediately harassed by Ruth Myers. Yeah, See that Ruth all night. Myers, yes, Johnny on the spot. Three misses. Akmudi rebounds, and she's attacked. And rather get a held ball. Let's see who the foul goes to. There's a couple of players there. Jasmine Morant will get foul number four into the free throw line with an 11-point lead to shoot Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws will be Lauren Akmudi. Akmudi, a 67% free throw shooter overall, leads the team, but I bet that percentage might be just a little bit higher down the stretch in fourth quarters of games. She netted her last two, misses that one. So leaves the door open a little bit here. Up 11 with 2.23 to go. Palti will re-enter along with a couple of Golden Bears. Kimball Palti. And now Lauren Achmudi will shoot the second of her free throws. That one she makes for point number 26-7. 27. 27. Sophia Paul gets a shot, and that will bounce out of bounds. Ruth Myers just total face guard on Ellie Everts. Saran wrap defense, number five in red on number 22 in white. Coach Everts playing a little offense defense this time as he brings back in Henderson and Fleming. Mm. 
And the inbound goes to Akmudi. Doubled up. Palti. Ahead to Nesby. Saves it at the sideline. Sophomore picks it up. And now Akmudi has it. And it's blocked. But goes out of bounds. Coach Schrader. Little intense with Lauren yeah. Akmudi right there. She can handle it. I think he would have liked an up fake and a, a dermal penetration right there. Be strong with the basketball is the message. Steck Scholte to Palti. Palti weaves down to the sideline and will throw it back out to, Steck, to Abby Steck Scholte. To Palti in the corner. Abby Steck Scholte with the basketball. She and Palti playing catch with it. Coach Everts, I think he's asking for his team to foul, but they can't hear him or get in position. Nesby, top of the circle to Steckscholdy. And it's thrown away. Everts with it. She's headed to the rim. Palti gets it from behind and knocks it out of bounds. There she is again, Kendall Palti. Maximum role player, PCL honorable mention selection. Breaks up the easy bucket right there. Going to make Gibsonburg earn it. It's a little thing, but it means a lot to her teammates. Well, it also meant that Ackbury didn't get a foul because she was trailing the play. Here's a three. That one will splash in. Emma Jividen, her sixth three-point field goal of the season. That's a Dales Concrete three-point field goal. The lead goes to nine with 68 seconds to go, Dave. Yeah, that was a great shot. Big-time shot for Jividen. And as we said, it's been nine, it's been 12, it's been up to 18. Yep. You got to give a lot of credit to Gibsonburg for the way they have fought back, and they're still really working hard to give themselves an opportunity. Uh, Dave, you and I are, are we old coaches, ex coaches? I don't know what the terminology is. <laughs> if, you're Columbus, above. if you're Columbus Grove, the clock never moves. It's the slowest moving clock in the history of clocks. If you're Gibsonburg, the clock is racing by and the game's getting away from us. It's just how you have a perspective right now. You're exactly right, Mark. And having been on the sideline uh, as an assistant coach with teams, I have Elida Fieldhouse scoreboards burnt into my memory. <laughs> Both on yeah, a positive, positive side yeah. and a not so positive side. I can see those digits, uh, dreams of exaltation and, as well as yeah. nightmares. It'll be Columbus Grove basketball based on out of bounds. Abby Steckshoulder will be the inbounder. Any Gibsonburg foul will put Columbus Grove to the free throw line. You might look to trap in the backcourt, but you can't let much time go off without putting Columbus Grove to the free throw line. Palti's ahead of the pack, and she scores. Lauren, Five points all in the quarter for Kendall Palti. Akmudi able to explode through that trapping defense, finds her teammate. And guess who just tracked the ball out and knocked <laughs> it out of bounds? There she is again. Kendall Palti. If we were on the softball field, her uniform would be completely black from dirt from the field. She has been all over the place. Morant looking to inbound. And we're going to get a holding foul that will go against Columbus Grove just the third of the quarter. Yeah, they're not shooting free throws, so Coach Schrader is not all that upset with that aggressiveness. That foul will go to Abby, Abby Steckschulte's second foul. Gibsonburg needing points in a hurry. They trail by 11. Sophia Paul to the rim. We're going to get a held ball, or it is a held ball. It's Columbus Grove's turn to have it. 44.7 to go in 11-point lead. Looking to get to the regional finals on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Sophia Paul attacking the rim has not been one of her best games, but she has done what a senior needs to do, and that's keep attacking, keep trying to find buckets for her team. Palti runs deep. Here's the long pass, and it sails out of bounds. And that's going to bring yeah, the ball all the way back down here to the baseline. That it will. Here comes the offense, defense again as Jividen will reenter, as does Leah Hall. <laughs> Good piece of sportsmanship. Paul goes to her teammates. Says, "Nice try, huh? Yeah, appreciate that." Hall to inbound, lobs it way out on top. Everett's pull up three. 
gets her own rebound, and she gets fouled on the rebound opportunity. What a heady play on the rebound. Mm -hmm. She goes right back up with it, draws contact. Upset that she didn't score the hoop as well, but she's going to go to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two. Abby Stecksholder got her third foul. That is point seventeen, uh, nineteen. Excuse me. She's going to learn to add one of these days. All right, Ock Moody with twenty-seven and Everts with nineteen. They both are right at their averages. And Ock Moody just ripped the rebound away. Now we got a held ball on the floor that will go to Gibsonburg with a ten-point lead. Grove. Based on out of bounds. There's that trapezoid. Take the foul line, draw a line to each corner from the elbow of the foul line. If it's inside that, it goes baseline out of bounds. That's where this one will go. Ruth Meyer tips it away. Taking time off the clock. Everett's cross dribble three. Akbudi rebounds again. This time she will draw a foul and go to the free throw line. And Ellie Everett's with her hands on her knees. She knows that Ruth Meyer's has guarded her with intensity this evening. Coach Schrader, he's going to ask Ruth what flavor of gum Ellie's choosing, chewing after this one. I think she'll go with dentine. Well, Hawk Moody will go to the free throw line. 27 for her in the game. <laughs> Hawk Moody with the miss right there again. 26 seconds, going to be hard to make up 10 points, but you want to continue to finish strong. Akmudi puts the second one up and nails it. And 28 for her. Everett picked up by Palti. Step back three again. That one will go. Tip your cap on that one if you're Ruth Meyer. She was there. Ellie Everett, well, a great look. You talk about a, a battler. Uh, Ellie Everett's had nine after three quarters. Correct. She's had 13 in this quarter trying to bring her team back. It's 52-44. That's the final Gibsonburg timeout. Yeah, she, she is as advertised as a freshman. But Lauren Ockmoody, you know, there have been a lot of great players uh, in the Northwest Conference this year. Ockmoody. Uh, Callie Gregory, who we're going to see in our yep. second game. Liv Lindemann from Jefferson. Uh, Riley Jones from Allen East. I've had the opportunity to see all of them play live. And, you know, the torch is going to be passed from Lindemann and Gregory to Jones and Ockmoody. And Ockmoody uh, is ready to roll with Here's it. the old football out yes. of bounds play. Bring her back. And Palti throws it inbound to Meyer. Ockmoody. Of course, that's a good play because Palti's dad's a football coach. <laughs> so she knows yeah. how to run that. Uh, Been a long-time successful coach, including now at uh, LCC in Lima. Yeah, do you think that uh, she was sitting on daddy's uh, lap years ago so. while he's drawn up X's and O's? Here's Akmudi with a pair of free throws. Makes the first one. Point .29. Here comes some substitutions into the game. Harley Gamble, uh, Taylor Rapp. Macy Kohler will enter the game. Can you see if I missed any of the new bodies for Gibsonburg? Everett's is still out there. And for Columbus Grove coming in will be Bella Wilson, followed by Jade Seifker. Here comes number four, Elena Moulter. And Ellie Everett will, foul, will finish the game with 22 as she heads to the bench. Here's the second free throw by Ock Moody. Advancing the ball is Kohler. Pass goes on top, Fleming. Gamble, and this one will come to an end. Columbus Grove will take a 53 to 44 victory over the Gibsonburg Golden Bears and move into the regional final game. That will be Saturday here at Elida at 1 p.m. Dave and I will take a break. We'll come back with a post game show in just a moment. We're watching high school basketball on WOSN.
We're back at the Atlanta Fieldhouse, the Union Bank Court. You can see the team warming up for our game at number two this evening. We'll be bringing you in just a moment. But in the meantime, Columbus Grove takes a 53-44 victory over the Gibsonburg Golden Bears. Time to present our Stolly Hustle Award winner. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on our WSN YouTube page. Dave, we talked about a lot of people who played really hard this evening, and so that wasn't an issue, but those 29 points of Lauren Ackman who stood out, and we're going to make her our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Well-deserved for Lauren Ackman. She didn't force the game. It came to her. She had those 29 points, but she'll be the first one in the post-game interview to share the fact that her teammates, especially Ruth Myers on defense, Kendall Palti just all over the place at both ends, and then Nicole Nesby on the boards. They were key factors for the Grove Lady Bulldogs coming away with the W. I, I know I've got one stat that really jumps off the page at me, and that is, you know, this is a, a nine-point game, 53-44. The opening quarter, 15 for Columbus Grove, four for Gibsonburg, and then they played even the rest of the night. Exactly, and I don't know. those. That's one of those things. Obviously, Columbus Grove is much more familiar and comfortable with the Elida Fieldhouse, Little Mecca. Their road trip was not nearly as long, but it just seemed like that first quarter, Grove came out and was able to establish what they wanted to do early on. Gibsonburg recovered, but as you said, that, that differential in the first quarter, that made it a situation where Gibsonburg had to play catch up all night long, and when you've got a Lauren Ockmoody on the other side of the ball, that's difficult to accomplish. Gibsonburg win their season with a very fine 23-3 and in their first trip ever to the regional tournament. Columbus Grove, they will go to 21 and 5 on the season. Ellie Everett's had a 22 for Gibsonburg, 8 for Jasmine Morant. On the other side, we mentioned the 29 from Lauren Ockmoody. She also got 12 from Nicole Esby, Nesby. And so Columbus Grove moves into the finals at 1 o'clock against one of these two teams that are warming up right now. And Dave, you and I will be here looking forward to that. Yeah, excited to have another game tonight Crestview and Calvert. Two teams that, again, have had outstanding seasons and looking forward to see how this one plays out. I want to thank the, Dave Evans, the athletic director here. Jacob O'Neill did all of our work in the building. Nick Fraley and uh, Jer Sherrick will e edit this back at the station. Megan Sherrick will edit this back at the station. We appreciate all their efforts this evening. Columbus Grove moves on to the regional finals. It's 53-44 with Gibsonburg. We've been watching high school basketball on WOSN.